Hello and welcome to this week's video. My name is Anuska Taylor. Thank you so much for joining me. So great to have you here. And today's topic is the truth bomb that no one is going to tell you. So stay tuned to find out more. But before I get going, if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And also, if you enjoy my videos, give them a like, share them, leave a comment, ask me a question. And finally, underneath the video in the description box, you'll find all the different ways you can work with me from online courses through to a digital voice coach option if you want some quick support and you want to send me a snippet of you speaking through to my signature eight month private voice coaching program, Speak With Impact, if you want the ultimate transformation. So what is the truth bomb? It is that no one is going to be that honest with you about how you come across when you speak, how you communicate in meetings, in presentations, in pitches, in interviews, fill in the blank. At best, people might say, oh, that was nice, that was good. But you know, they're not really being honest. They're more likely to just not say anything than actually say, you know what, Anuska, you just came across, you sounded so boring, so monotone, everyone was falling asleep. We could barely understand anything you were saying, and we just wanted to put a rocket behind you. No one is going to say that. Of course, they're not going to say that. However, the problem is just because people aren't saying it to your face does not mean they're not thinking it and does not mean that they're not having conversations behind closed doors about the fact that perhaps you aren't owning your voice. The fact that you do struggle to be assertive and authoritative in meetings, the fact that your voice is lacking in expression and vibrancy and, and animation, and it just sounds dreary and boring because those things matter, particularly the more senior you become and you, you are going to be more visible, you are going to have to manage teams, you are more likely to be going on TV or being asked to speak at events and conferences. So your voice really, really does matter. And it's going to really impact the opportunities and the promotions that you might be open to. I have heard this from countless clients. This isn't just me guessing this as well. I've heard this from people not that long ago. Literally, I was doing a consult with a client and he said to me, one of the first things he said to me was, I want to work with you because you're the only person that's going to be honest with me about how I come across. And what I find is with people like him and other people that I've worked with, where they run businesses, they run companies, they've got huge teams underneath them. People are not going to be honest with you when they fear losing their job, when they fear not getting that promotion. So they're just going to say whatever it is they think you want to hear. So even if they're thinking, oh my God, this is so frustrating and difficult to understand you, they're not going to say it, even if they're thinking it. So he started working with me because he wanted me to be very honest with him and give him constructive feedback about how he was coming across, how we could enhance and optimize his speaking and his communication. So you might be thinking, well, you know, my mum is always very honest with me or my partner's always very honest with me or my best friend would give me honest feedback. And that may be true, but just remember that the people that are emotionally closest to us cannot see us for who we really are because they're so invested in the relationship. They love us. They don't actually really want us to change. It's a threat when we grow, maybe unconsciously, but it is an unconscious threat for the people around us. So whether they are deliberately doing it or not, they are not gonna be able to see the truth of who you are, the truth of your potential. And so often we find that the people closest to us are often the most critical of us because they're really projecting their own stuff. And this is the thing, if you're seeking advice from people that are really close to you, they are emotionally invested in the relationship. They don't actually want this dynamic to change. On some level, they probably don't really want you to grow. And therefore, you sort of growing and standing in your power as a speaker might be a threat to them. So they're going to be projecting a lot of their own stuff. Also, if they haven't done their own work around their voice, they are probably going to just project that onto you as well. So for example, if they have a weak voice, I'm just using this as an example, and you perceive you have a weak voice, they could be quite critical of the fact that you have a weak voice because they haven't really done their own work around it. So they're just projecting their own 
judgments and criticisms of themselves onto you. So it's not necessarily helpful. It really depends on the nature of that relationship, how awake, how conscious that person is, and also how much work they've done on their own voice for them to really be able to give you more impartial, balanced feedback on what they're hearing. Otherwise, they're just going to be projecting their own stuff onto you with the best of intentions. I'm not saying that they're deliberately, consciously trying to upset you, but we all know the people closest to us usually have the greatest ability to hurt us with their cutting sort of critical remarks. And often, again, that's because they're projecting their stuff onto you. So just to bear that in mind, and that's why I sort of don't feel like relying on that is particularly helpful. But the important point here is regardless if anyone's actually being honest with you or not to your face, they will absolutely be talking about you behind your back. Particularly if you're in a more senior position, if you're managing teams, if you run a company and you are communicating frequently, people will be making comments and judgments about how you come across and how you communicate and are you engaging and are you know what's your voice like etc cetera, etc cetera. are you someone that they want to listen to it's human nature we all do it and as i say the problem with this is that it can really hinder your ability to progress to get that bigger promotion to seek and take bigger opportunities so just to give you an example a number of years ago i was asked to go into a company a global company that you definitely would have heard of, so I'm not going to say the name of it, to work with one of their senior managers. And what had happened was there'd been this 360 review and the feedback had kind of come back unanimously with this particular person that no one really could understand anything he said. He mumbled, he talked really fast and he would be running meetings and people would be like, what just happened in that meeting? but no one had the guts to say anything to him. And yet when it came back through this 360 review, the feedback was fairly unanimous across the board, not just with his team, but also his peers and his superiors. And so what ended up happening was the HR department of this particular company contacted me and asked me to coach him and help him improve his voice, help him to find greater clarity, greater expression, and just really show up and be more confident in his communication and what was interesting was his ability to improve his communication was linked to his next promotion now I don't know whether he knew that at the time but certainly I was told this when I was brought in as a coach that if he couldn't improve his communication it was going to hinder his opportunity for the next promotion for the next stage up in the business and this is a global company so the the opportunities were endless so this is just an example because I think he had an awareness that maybe his voice wasn't particularly clear and maybe he talked fast and he mumbled, but because no one ever said anything to him, I, I don't think he really thought it was a big issue. And it was only when this feedback came back and it was unanimous pretty much from all corners of the business that this was something that he needed to address if he was seriously wanting to get promoted and keep rising the ranks. So I don't think he was particularly surprised when when they organized for him to work with me. But at the same time, I don't think he would have done anything about it had it not been sort of forced on him. So this is where I think self-awareness really comes in as well, because you don't sort of want to wait until it's a real issue. He was lucky enough that the business paid for me to come and coach him. But you sort of you don't want to wait until the horse has bolted because you don't know what opportunities you're missing out on in the meantime. And people do talk. This is the truth. People do talk. They might not have the guts to say it to your face, but they will talk behind closed doors. They will talk, as we all know, on social media. It's amazing how brave people can be in communicating on social media, but would never have the guts to say it to your face. So it's the same thing. So it's just to know, and you have to be really honest with yourself. So there's a couple of ways you can look at this. I, regardless of which way you go down, I always say to people, start recording yourself, watch yourself, video yourself. You don't have to share the video with anyone else, particularly if it's confidential, but watch yourself present, watch yourself in a meeting, watch how you interact. How do you hold yourself? How do you speak? How do you come across? Because really the first step is self-awareness. You don't want to wait until it becomes a problem like with this client where he's 
forced to work with me otherwise he won't get his next promotion so start to watch yourself speak and start to notice okay would i want to listen to me speak would i want to be a team member a colleague a client listening to me speak or would i be bored listening to me speak so that's the first stage can you take a step back and view how you communicate from an outsider's perspective because you can't do it when you're in your head this is the truth what you hear is not what anyone else hears so that's the first thing and i would say regardless of what you do do that the challenge then is if you just take that as i've said before and you're like okay well i sound really boring and i'm mumbling but i don't know what to do about that and for any of you that follow any of my other videos, you know that your voice is very conditioned. So you're not deliberately mumbling. You're not deliberately sounding bored when you speak. It's very conditioned. There's something in this around, it's not safe for me to be heard. It's not safe for me to clearly and powerfully express myself. So if you don't address that, you're probably not gonna allow yourself to have success. Even if you find the right exercises, you're still not gonna have the success. So this is where I think it becomes so difficult because you need to know what to do, both on a practical perspective, but also on the emotional perspective. Like, what is this really about? Why am I holding my voice back? Why won't I allow my voice out? It is not random. So many clients find me because they've tried to do it themselves and they've realized it's actually incredibly difficult. This doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. The greatest in their field in the world have coaches for this reason, because we can't see the picture when, when we're in the frame. It's just a fact. So there's nothing wrong with you for needing some support externally from someone to come in and help you. But it's having the awareness, first of all, that there is an issue here. So you have the option then of going down the path by yourself, trying to figure it out for yourself, and maybe spending years potentially going down the wrong rabbit hole because even if you say realize okay i mumble i speak really fast it's very hard to change that pattern by yourself because it's so emotionally rooted so even if you found some exercises it's probably going to take a long time to change because you need that awareness of what's really driving it in the first place so your other option of course is to work with a coach and this is what i do this is how I help people because I can be that constructive criticism. I can help you really understand what's going on with your voice. And I'm not just going to be giving you surface level when well, you sound boring, for example. I probably would never say that to someone. What I might say is your pitch is very low and there's not a lot of intonation in your voice. There's not a lot of expression in your voice but I can give you the technical reasons why your voice sounds boring or why your voice is constricted or weak or strained or breathy, et cetera, et cetera. So I can really help you to understand sort of functionally and technically what's going on, give you the practical tools, but also we address emotionally what's actually underneath this. Why don't I wanna be heard? Or opposite of that, maybe you love to be heard, but your voice is very, pushed and strained and gets tired really easily because you're just pushing it all the time. And maybe the question is, what's my fear of not being heard? What's my fear of taking a step back? So again, it two sides of the same coin. So this is where the goals of working with a coach really comes in because it's so difficult to see the picture when you are in the frame. And this is where my signature eight month private voice coaching program, Speak With Impact, is so powerful and so transformational because I help you to really understand what's going on with your voice. And actually I've said this before, but what's going on with your voice is really a symptom of what's going on within. So you'll find that whatever your voice is presenting is really pointing to something more deeply going on within, which is going to be impacting everything in your life, not just your voice. So for example, if you struggle to really get power in your voice, there's a very good chance that you probably struggle to express yourself assertively and with conviction in all areas of your life. It might just be maybe at work, in certain circumstances, it's more obvious, but I can guarantee that will still be showing up 
in your relationships with family, with a romantic partner, you will still be putting the brakes on in some way as to how you communicate because the voice never lies. As Lisa Marciano said that I interviewed a couple of months ago, co-host of This Jungian Life, the voice betrays the ego. The ego likes to have control over everything. And well, if I do this, people will think I'm really strong and powerful. And, or if I do this, people will think this, but the voice betrays the ego. So meaning the voice doesn't lie. You can control it to a point, but if really deep down, you really don't wanna be heard because you really fear the consequences of being seen, being heard, being shamed, being criticized, fill in the blank. You could do all the vocal exercises in the world and there'll still be a break on your voice. So this is why you really have to address the root cause. The voice is the symptom. The root cause is emotionally what's going on within. And most of that is very unconscious. Hence my use of Jungian psychology to help clients really understand themselves and their voice better. So if you are interested in this deeper approach to your voice and you are ready to truly reclaim your authentic voice and really show up in your power in meetings, in presentations, in pitches, in interviews, fill in the blank, and you want some constructive feedback and a roadmap for how to actually move forward, this is where I can help you because it's incredibly hard to do by yourself. The other thing as well is just as a busy professional, you know, your time is money. You can always earn more money. I know your ego might disagree with that, but you can never get more time back, but you can always earn more money. So the more you really own your voice, the more you really show up in your power when you speak, the more opportunities are going to come to you. The bigger promotions, you're going to earn more money. I say this to people all the time and they don't quite believe me, but it's like you are literally by hindering your voice, you're hindering your opportunities to actually earn more money because the more successful you become, the more you are going to have to be seen, you're going to have to be heard and you're going to have to show up. So that can be very, very threatening. So thank you for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Any questions or comments, please post them below. Thank you so much and I'll see you again.